are very pleased to welcome to Tales from the Tavern, Mary Gaucher.
saddest train I ever heard by my dear friend and mentor, Fred J. Eagle Smith, yeah. whom I adore. And I mix it up a lot. I'm, I'm trying different collaborations now. Um, fiddle works brilliantly with my songs yeah, yeah. because they have that bittersweet sort of melancholy and the violin to me just sounds like that. And so I, I love, if I can, get a fiddler to jump in. I always want the violin. And, and Mike Meadows is just a fabulous percussionist um, who has really been just, it just works. So these two right now are, are fantastic. I love having them with me. In addition to uh, the, the creative, uh, just, just wonderful uh, connection we make musically, I like them as people. And the older I get, the more important that is. But I need to work with people that I click with spiritually and emotionally. And if we have different value systems, if we have different, profoundly different belief systems, it's just problematic for me. Yeah. I, want to, I need people that are kind, that are easygoing, that are professional, that have uh, a similar vision to me, that understand the difference between uh, uh, arrogance and humility. That's, I guess that's how I put it. You know, you, in fact, that should be how I'd interview people. No, give me your definition of humility. Give me your definition of arrogance. Go. Go. You know? And if we don't, if you can't, then you, you haven't done the work. And, uh, you want to give us yours? Yeah. Humility is knowing that uh, uh, you are no better than any other person who's ever walked the earth. And arrogance is a feeling of superiority that's unwarranted and unmerited. child in New Orleans to a woman I have never seen I don't know if she ever held me all I know is that she let go of me so I passed through like thunder I passed through like Feeling I can't control I hit the wall Then I hit the highway I got the curse Of the gypsy on my soul And I move through Stay now, but I don't 
leave forever I just pray the good Lord don't take me slow I don't know where I'm going Just let me say goodbye and go And I'll push through like thunder I'll push through like rain Pushed out from under Goodbye could have been my family name I will push through like thunder I'll push through like rain Pushed out from under at the end of that record you know more about me but what I'm really hoping is you know more about the effects of adoption and what adoption trauma is you know we don't put those two words together yet um, but they go together adoption and trauma go together um, there's a great loss uh, in adoption for the adoptee in a closed adoption you don't ever get access to your ancestors your your nationality your history your roots and that loss is not something we've been allowed to really acknowledge. Um, in fact, if we were to acknowledge the feeling of loss, we would be perceived as ungrateful. And so my job right now is to work within those parameters and talk to people from my, 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 my position as someone with a microphone about what I think the truth is. And to help folks who are in, in, in the throes of something they don't really understand, both the parents, uh, the adoptive parents, the birth parents, and the adoptees, we, we're at this early stage of being able to talk openly and honestly about it. And so that record was my attempt to bring this out. Really, it's kind of a therapeutic record, but hopefully it's representative of something more universal. Well, I was born in New Orleans and uh, lived in a place off of Magazine Street for my first year, a little place called St. Vincent de Paul's, and I was adopted into a family uh, that brought me to uh, Baton Rouge and then Thibodeau, Louisiana, where the sugar cane grows. And uh, here's a little protest song about the harvesting of that crop, because the way they harvest it is by setting the fields on fire all at once. Hundreds of thousands of acres of burning cane and creates a little bit of a smoke and soot and ash situation. And, uh, this is, uh, actually I wrote this because I toured with Guy Clark for several years and he always used to say from the stage, if you want to get to heaven, you better put your mama in your songs. <laughs> I just didn't know how to work her into it until uh, I thought of how when we were kids and the sugar cane fields would start burning up right around Christmas time, she'd always want to bring us in and, and uh, keep us out of the smoke. And, I was adopted into a family that uh, I probably uh, couldn't be more different from. I was adopted into Italians, uh, <laughs> short olive skinned people. My mom's about like that big. She's, she's a beauty shop goer. She comes out of that beauty shop and boom. <laughs> noticeably taller. She always wears these polka dot dresses and goes to church every Sunday, votes Republican, and uh, ra rarely swears. So when she s swore, you, she, she got your attention. And, uh, and uh, in her best little Southern mama Italian voice, when the cane fires would come, she'd always just say, this shit's gonna kill all of us. <laughs> so in honor of her, and we're going, Play y'all a song. Here we go.
Response to that, or um, reactions you've received to it that has surprised you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I get guys coming up to me after the show sometime, crying, and they want to hug me. They tell me, you know, Mary, I never told anybody this, but I fathered a kid when I was in college, 
and we decided not to have an abortion. They should put the kid up for adoption. I don't know what ever happened to that kid, and I know that kid's an adult now, and I don't know what to do about it, and I feel that presence of another human being that's a part of me, I'm at a loss. And I'm a different guy now, but I don't know what to do or say. I would never have expected that. Mm -hmm. uh, and birth mothers who surrendered babies who, who have moved forward in their life and want to know what happened to that kid, just is that kid okay? How did they turn out? You know, adoptive parents who are up against the wall with adopted kids who are acting out all over the place and they don't understand it. Like, I, I gave him everything. Why is he suicidal? What's going on? So I've been, I thought it, I knew it would resonate with adoptees, but all of the people in the triad, uh, I didn't know if it would speak to. So I'm, I'm uh, a little overwhelmed and a lot happy that it has resonated in that way. Right. But I don't really know what to do with it. And so I just want to start the dialogue, you know? Um, here's a song we put together uh, in Nashville when he had a little time off. This is called Between Daylight and Dark. Well, the grasses are swaying. The sun's going down. Music's playing. You're weaving through town, pulling to the driveway, tossing and park. Stare out of the windshield, out into the world, it was all for the love of a wayward girl who left you with a second place smile. And a broken heart And the street lights are starting to flicker to light They glow for a minute Then they get bright Fireflies light up Circle and spark There's nothing really that you can do. Put your hands in your pockets. Try to get through the distance between the daylight and the dark. themselves down like forgotten soldiers or old wedding gowns in closets unopened graves without any marks as the night curtains lower behind the rooftops shadows dance Across the sidewalks they ricochet off of the houses like pieces of art. your hands on the wheel head into the distance the distance between the daylight
Well, um, that was the title track of a record I made outside of LA, and uh, one of the incredible musicians that played on that record is, is here tonight, and we'd love to bring Gre Greg Lease up for a couple of songs. <laughs> bring a guitar, we borrowed one, we went out looking for one, Ron. He's like, well, hell, he's not going to get away with not playing, we're going to have to find him a guitar. Why be off when you can work? <laughs> it's playing, I know. This is a thrill for me. I've already tweeted about it. <laughs> we haven't done it yet, but the world knows we're gonna.
Tramps dream and wander too But a hobo was a pioneer Who preferred to work for food He knew how our nation was doing By the length of a sidewalk cigarette butt Mike Meadows.
called your name Till an angel with a face like yours Came down and let me in Thought I saw your reflection In a cigarette machine In a bottle and a gutter In a window on a street In a storefront in a picture On an old broken TV There were junkies lying on the ground They made me look away I spilled you on a mirror I chopped you into lines Over some old kitchen sink I swore I'd let you die Thought I saw your reflection In a cigarette machine Broken mirrors, dog-eared things I read Worn out movie stars and faded limousines I struggle through my own charades Coffee cups and clowns I can't keep up with parades I keep falling
is another night it's another town and I'm another blues traveler headed down falling out of love it's a dangerous thing with its slippery slopes with its weighted wings with its birds of prey circling overhead Casting vulture shadows on barren beds Let me out Send me free clock inside the church bell tower it rings your name every hour I see your face I touch your hair in the ringing face and nobody's there This crucible kiss with his ravaged ring, with his holy whisper, with his labyrinth lies, with his sacrilegious hungry sighs, let me out. Send me free. Search your silence, searching for a crack, for a passageway where I can pull you back. Falling out of love, it's a tedious thing with this jailhouse smirk, with this chain gang swing. With its time to serve, with its sunset, with its warm blood, with its cold sweat, let me
Greg Lease. Well, I don't know if I should, but I'm gonna go ahead and just brag. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am an award-winning songwriter. <laughs> That's right. You may find it hard to believe, but I was named the Gay Country Songwriter of the Year in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> Fiercely competitive category at the award show. Um, highly coveted award. Never before was there a category called gay country songwriter, but um, <laughs> shoot, I'll take it where I can get it. In fact, I ought to write a gospel song so I can create a Christian gay country songwriter thing. Start filling up my mantelpiece with stuff. <laughs> I told my little Italian mama about it. She said three words. She said, Jesus Christ Mary. <laughs> I knew she would love it. That's what, one of the joys of winning the award was being able to tell her about it. <laughs> She wasn't on board for any of this until I started touring with Willie Nelson and then things changed. She's like, um, do you think you can get us tickets for that show? Um, can we go backstage and just maybe meet him? Damn, Willie wins again. Willie Nelson's Red-Headed Stranger, I think, is the definitive country concept album. And I learned so much just studying that record. I really studied it. And I had a great opportunity to talk to Willie about it. I'm good friends with Mickey, who plays in the band. He said they recorded that thing in three days. Right. Soup to nuts, done. They turned it in, and the record company was like, great demos, where's the record? Willie's like, there, that is the record. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, man, there's no backup singers, there's no uh, bells, there's no whistles, it's just this story, we can't do anything with this. He said, well, that's what you get. Yep. So, uh, that paved the way for the last thing. Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain, yep. number one. Boom, record company once again wrong, artist once again visionary. Anyway, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna play this award winning song for you. It's called Drag Queens in Limousines. I hated high school. I prayed it would end The jocks and their girls It was their world I didn't fit in Mama said, baby That's the best school money can buy You be strong Hold your head up Please marry the try So I stole mama's car on a Sunday Left home for good Moved in with my friends in the city In a bad neighborhood Charles was a dancer, he loved the ballet. Kimmy sold pot, she read Kerouac and Hemingway. Drag queens in a limousine, nuns and blue jeans. Flip 
murders to cover the rent and bourbons at happy hour for 35 cents one day before work we got drunk danced in the rain they fired us both They said, don't ever come back again Yeah, but drag queens in limousine Nuns and blue jeans Dreamers with big standing next. And I should tell y'all that in addition to being an incredible drummer percussionist, Mike Meadows owns a company called Swan Percussion. And the instrument he's playing, he made, he developed it, he created it, he conceived it, he believed it, he achieved it. It's called the Black Swan. It is a very special drum. It is, um, 
It is well conceived, it sounds wonderful, and it, it, it is uh, exactly the right weight, so you can check it as baggage and you don't have the overweight. Um, it's thought up in a very, very practical way and beautiful way. Uh, check out Swan Percussion if you're uh, at all interested in percussion instruments. Mike Meadows. We'll play one more for y'all and then we'll be happy to go back there and sign stuff for you. Uh, we got CDs and uh, we even have dog tags and, and, uh, and beer koozies that say, I drink. <laughs> The first 500 were misspelled somehow. <laughs> well, I wrote this song for a dear friend of mine who passed away. It was a legendary, incredible songwriter named Dave Carter. And uh, gosh, I loved his song so much. And, and we were dear friends. We got, we got kind of accepted and led into the folk circuit at the same time. You know you're in when they invite you to play Newport. That uh, uh, was at the time anyway, in 2000, the, uh, the standard bearer it was from the time Dylan plugged in there until they sold it and now it's sort of a rock festival. But at that time we were both invited to play Newport and 11 or 12 other folk festivals that summer and we were both a lot older than all the other kids and we just got close. And uh, when, we, when we lost him to a heart attack a while back, I wrote, I wrote this song for him. And somehow, I'm, I'm sure he had something to do with it. Somehow Jimmy Buffett heard it, recorded it. I got a big check and immediately went to CarMax and bought a Lexus hybrid SUV. <laughs> you don't put Jimmy Buffett fun money into an IRA, you know? I think that would be bad karma. I thought, get the car of your dreams. You know the one I love, it's the one that, uh, it looks either like a soccer mom or a sort of a cocaine dealer. <laughs> the black one with the tinted windows and the silver chrome on the wheels. I love that car. It's getting on in years now, so we need to come up with some other little miracle. Uh, <laughs> if you're in any way affiliated with uh, placing songs in movies, Please speak to me after the show. I will load you up with CDs and uh, beg of you to put something in a movie. Yeah, uh, television, we love having songs placed. Uh, it's more money than we make touring annually, probably. <laughs> Getting one or two in there. And uh, I never did sign my publishing over to anybody, so I own it. There really weren't a lot of bids for it, you know. The, the, uh, the truth is, the gay country songwriters aren't exactly first in line when they're looking for placements, but it could change, it could change. This one's for Dave and, and, uh, and for the good folks we lost in Libya. Circle and sway 
slavery free Souls ain't born, soul don't die Soul ain't made of earth, ain't made of water, ain't made of sky Ain't made of earth, ain't made of water, ain't made of sky